New York City's flower market, a floral designer's secret. There, I met up with Leslie Zamore, a Wall Street banker termed top floral designer and owner of Bloom New York, to learn his trade secrets. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Sheila. How, How are, are you? you? Good to see you. How's everything? Everything's good. Fantastic. So what are we shopping for today? Well, today we have uh, a lot of seasonal, seasonal flowers. We have peonies, we have viburnum, okay. we have uh, lilacs. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff. So can we walk around a little bit Absolutely. and look at stuff? Sure. And can I pick out flowers that I love? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so peonies. Right. I would never think to buy these because they're so, seem so tightly closed. I mean, is this too early to, you know, that you would buy the flower? Is it going to open? How long is it going to take to open if you buy something like that? Sure. If you're having people over your house tonight, I would not buy very tight closed peonies like okay. this. However, if it's for your home and you want it to last for the week, then it would be a very good idea to purchase some that are sort of tight and some that are sort of open. So you okay. can start enjoying them as soon as you get them home. Okay. And then the closed ones will develop throughout the week. So now, do you put them in warm water? Does that accelerate sort of the pace in which they open, or does it really matter? It certainly does. Warm water certainly accelerates the, the pace at which it opens uh, because especially the uh, the bulbs, right? The bulbs okay. are flowers such as tulips, hyacinths, anemones, even uh, lilies are in the bulb family. So when you put bulbs in a warm medium, uh, it's just like spring. When spring comes, bulbs explode, and right. as soon as the weather gets hot, okay. they really develop. So that's the key to getting them okay. to develop. Now, what about all these things that aren't really traditional, like that almost look like fruit? Yeah, yeah, or... absolutely. This is kumquat, and oh, uh, wow. it's in the orange family, and uh, oops. and you can eat it as well. Oh, really? It has, sure, and the key to the kumquat is that the sweetness is in the skin. So we're going to Right off, you eat it with the skin to get the sweet out of it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very How's bitter. That oh, it's bitter. <laughs> yeah. Very bitter, very tart. You need a glass of water. Very tart. You need a glass of water afterwards. Okay. But we use these inside the water. We also use them in the arrangement. Okay. And it gives the arrangement a different flair. Right. Uh, it's non traditional. Um, I love hydrangea. These are that brilliant sort of purple blue color. Is there anything that I can do to kind of keep them fresh and, and keep that vibrant color? Well, a lot of times you'll leave a flower arrangement in the vase and at the end of the week you'll take the flowers out and you'll be like, woo, what's that right, smell? Right, exactly. Okay, <laughs> that's bacteria forming. Okay. So in order to make the flower last longer, to get right. the maximum longevity out of it, you need to ideally change the water every day. Also, floral, uh, floral life or any type of floral powder for flowers helps reduce bacteria and open up the pores of the, of the stem so that the water could rise up to the head. Okay, and generally should you put flowers in warm water, cool water, tepid water? Warm water is always the best. Okay. Uh, now, of course, bulbs can handle cold water, but most hard stem flowers such as lilac can't really handle the cold water as well. You know, with roses, quite often people these days ask, well, why isn't the rose fragrant? The general population wants flowers to last longer. In getting the longevity, you lose the smell. I see. Okay? So, once in a while, you'll have what we call these garden and tea hybrids, such as this rose, called fragrance. Now, Fragrant Cloud is one of the few oh, wow. tea roses that actually have a smell. It Are you smells... sure they didn't spray that with perfume? <laughs> yeah, this is... It does smell like the typical rose perfume, okay. right? Yes, yeah, this is, this is very typical rose scent. Okay. Uh, so this one is uh, one of the only ones you'll find in the tea varieties that really actually have a scent. We buy our roses what we call cut open. So whenever we buy a rose, you'll notice that the rose is slightly opened already. Right, right. A lot of people come to the stores and they say, well, do you have something tighter than this? Right. We don't buy anything tighter than this because generally anything tighter than this will not open and develop quite fully. Right. It's premature. Okay. They'll cut the roses premature and then they'll sell them cheap. And that's okay. what a lot of the delis do. Right. And that's why the next day the rose falls down. Okay. Because that rose was not ready. It was not fully mature yet to be sold. And what about these? These are nice. I'm for whatever reason I'm attracted to Aren't these. Aren't these special? All these very like girly <laughs> flowers. They're sort of pink and white and it looks like the exterior is kind of white and green and then the interior is sort of the hot pink. Yeah, this is a very special spray rose actually. It's a garden variety. Okay. And uh, it's, it's really, it makes a really pretty uh, bridesmaid bouquet for weddings. <laughs> okay, it's a little premature, I'm not yeah. ready for that. You're not but... ready for that? 